Staying on young people starting out in hunting, let's divert to South Africa for more from the Northern Cape Professional Hunting School. Ollie Williams is out with trainee professional hunters from the school after, he hopes, a wildebeest. We met up with the, with the young PHs who were, who were, who were studying here um, and we basically were out for whatever we could find that would be suitable for the cull. We first looked at a couple of red hardebeest but they, 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 they suspected us early and, and moved off and then we saw a Nice pair of um, blue wildebeest, about um, half a mile away. I mean, it's stalking paradise. You've got amazing topography and bushes you can use as cover and ravines and rivers, and it really is. It's um, it is a paradise here for, for hunting. Two good bulls, one of them which was definitely good for a cull. Um, so we started to make, make our way and plan a bit of a stalk, and we found a really nice row of um, row of bushes which which we thought would work really well for a stalk. Um, we were hopping between one, hopping between one, until we, we reached the end of these bushes uh, and found uh, that we were probably about 160 yards away. We probably could have got closer, and I, I would, if I had been PHing, I probably would have liked to have got closer, but um, I was happy to take the shot, so I took the shot. And for, my, for all intents and purposes, I'd say it was perfect, you know, straight in the middle of the shoulder. Uh, both the PHs agreed, uh, but the, it, it was ran, certainly mortally wounded, but a lot further than a mortally wounded animal should run. I mean, they do call these things the poor man's buffalo because wildebeest are tough as nails. Um, and then I shot it again and he, he went down for good this time. But it was remarkable to see this, you know, this animal go for as long as it did. Um, and we, when we got there, confirmed was the first shot was perfect. Um, straight in the middle of the shoulder, you know, right through the... It was probably a bit higher the heart because the wildebeest's heart is quite low, uh, low down the leg. Um, but you know, straight for the straight for the lungs and, and God knows what else. Basically, stuff that you shouldn't be able to run away from. But he did. Ollie did part of the PH course here back in 2019, so he knows some of what the young PHs looking after him are going through. Yeah, there was definitely there's definitely more buffalo here now. There's more, more all pretty much all the plains came. Um, the only thing they struggled with, I think, is the is the zebra. Uh, but that's probably because they've had um, leopard that have that have that made their way in. So. You know, the leopard are an example of where the, eco the ecosystem is strong enough now to support the big predators. Um, so I think they're absolutely over the moon to see the leopard here. And um, it's another testament to, to, what, to what the hard work of these, these PHs has, has done and done for the area. So your PH is, is your eyes and ears all of the time if you're a client. You, you, you know, you do what they say and, and mainly because they keep you out of harm's way. And that's when you're out here, things can go south very quickly. Um, and that's when you will rely on man or woman stood beside you and the couple of things I would have done differently is as an English client they were speaking Afrikaans a lot to one another I would want them to speak English so that not only so the client could understand what was going on the whole time because truth be told I the only reason I really knew what was going on is because of my own experiences I if I had been a clueless I wouldn't literally have known not what animal we were shooting to the very last minute also we were, we were quite far away for you know and whilst clients should be able to shoot uh, 160 yards is a challenging shot um, off, off, a, off, a, off a shooting sticks. I'm only being pedantic in terms of what I changed. I, I thought it was pretty much perfect from start to finish. I would obviously straight away, almost always in the UK, get your knife out, grab it, and, and everything. But here it's quite different. They usually, I mean, you, you take the stomach out, I suppose, um, which we did. Um, and then, other than that, it's, it's then wait for the extraction vehicle. All that meat is is then sold for, or, or moved on, or eaten in camp. It's you know, it's all used. It's all very much a product of, um, of, of the hunt but they also the PH will then ask you what you want to do with the, the animal itself in terms of for your you know I suppose trophy and, and the answer would be you know you either have a cape cape and head mount or in this sense I'd probably go for I'm going for a skull um, purely because you know if I have a few animals in a trip it's going to be very expensive to get them all done and sent home so skulls tend to uh, you know they're still pretty pretty impressive and um, and I think just as just as effective as, as telling the story and having a having a you know a, a forever memory on your in your sheep lodge or wherever it may may stand. And I'm trying to avoid, I don't know why I'm trying to find myself trying to avoid the word trophy, but purely because of how the demonised the, the press seems to have made it. But it's essentially what it is, I suppose. But yeah, I do find myself trying to avoid it. I don't know why. While they wait for the vehicle, one of the guides spots Springbuck. The hunt wasn't over whilst we were waiting for the vehicle. We were sat up in a bush, you know, keeping out of the wind. I was going to say sun, but it was cold wind. It wasn't remotely warm. And the 
group of Springbok started to wander down towards us and we thought, no, they won't come over there. And sure enough, they ended up feeding to within 100 yards. And so then we had, a, then we had you know, the opportunity to get up on the sticks and select the, the best round from that group. Um, as we were doing this, the cruiser then decided to make its appearance to pick up the wildebeest. So the Springbok suddenly realised that they had a hang on a minute and some of them started to move. So then suddenly it was very high pressure which one, which one, which one? No, that's overlapping. No, that's overlapping. No, that's broadside. I had three opportunities. We're almost all the trigger and it moved until I finally had that we had the right animal in the right place, broadside. Uh, and I made a pretty, pretty, pretty effective shot. And this one did go down pretty much on the spot. So he, he, he ran a yard, reared up, and fell down dead. So, you know, that's um, in the sense that the difference that the you know, Blue Wildebeest probably would have shrugged off and said, stuck two fingers and run off again but um no that was uh, that was that was great so and i think we're set to bry bry the uh, springbok this evening so um you know it's a result all round and uh, two animals on the ground so yeah for more about the northern cape professional hunting school go to ncph.co.za